Now, if you watch our channel regularly, then you know we love tiny PCs on this channel. And today's video is gonna be no exception. We're looking at the Lenovo ThinkCenter Neo Ultra, a 3.6 liter PC with pretty beefy specs that will look great on your desk and you can hold in one hand. So now we've bought this model in the UK for £1,399. And for that price, you're gonna be getting an Intel i7-14700 desktop CPU, an RTX 4060 desktop graphics card, 16 gigabytes of DDR5, and a high-speed one terabyte SSD. So finally, a mini workstation that can go toe-to-toe -to, -toe to the Mac Studio that's been very popular for the last couple of years. Now on the Windows side of mini PCs, there are a lot of mini PCs available to buy, but they very rarely got dedicated graphics. So it's nice to see that Lenovo finally put something out with a dedicated 4060. They've actually used a proper 4060 and not just an onboard laptop model. So that's quite nice to see. So I wanna take a quick look around this before we start looking at the performance of it. Now this is, as I say, a 3.6 liter. It's quite a dense piece of kit, but size wise, we're talking 19.5 centimeters wide, 11 centimeters high, and about 19.2 centimeters deep. So this is really is an absolutely tiny little unit, but it is dense as I said, so let's see how much it weighs. So if the scales can manage it. So 3.4 kilogram, so though pretty heavy, it's only like a large laptop, you can easily pick it up with one hand and chuck it in a bag. So if you're somebody that works in the office and then takes your work home in the end of the day, it's very easy to throw this in your bag and have it easily set up in both locations. Then you get the added benefits of a pretty much desktop sized machine. So looking around the actual machine itself, on the front, it's nice to see some ports. We've got the power button, a USB-C, two USB-As and a headset jack. Then on the rear, we've got quite a lot of ports here. We've got a built-in power supply, so we've obviously got our power connector. Then we've got the main ports for the actual unit itself. So an onboard display for the Intel graphics, a USB-A, an onboard HDMI, three more USB-As and an RJ45. So a good selection of ports. For the graphics card itself, we've got the display port, HDMI followed by another two display ports. So you can have a lot of displays hooked up to this little unit. Whereas if they had used the laptop graphics card, that would have probably limited that for us. Now there is a couple of ports that I think are completely missing from this unit and for the price I think is a bit of a shame. Firstly, there's no Thunderbolt 4 ports on the rear of this unit. We get a USB-C on the front, which is nice, but nothing on the rear. Now that's a real shame, because it means firstly, you haven't got that Thunderbolt 4 port for maybe an eGPU or a dock. And secondly, you can't plug this with one cable to a monitor and then have everything go through the USB-C of your actual monitor. So that's a real shame. And secondly, there's an audio jack on the front, but there's no audio jack on the rear. So that means you could plug a headset into the front of this unit, but you can't plug a pair of speakers into the rear of it. So what you'll have to do is use an HDMI out and then plug it into your monitor or buy another natural amp to put your speakers through the amp. But again, that's a miss on an expensive uh, item like this. Now, the one advantage of a unit like this, especially over something like a Mac Studio that has no upgradability, is the fact that we can upgrade a fair amount of the components in here. So I'm gonna just quickly show you the SSD and the RAM and how easy it is to get into. So the feet themselves, you just literally twist and lift off which reveals four screws. And then we'll just quickly whiz those four screws out. And there we go. We've now got access to the two RAM slots and the two SSD slots. Now, as you can see, we've got one SSD populated and that is a fast Samsung drive. That's nice to see they've included that. And secondly, we've got one 16 gigabyte DDR RAM stick in here. Now, I'm in two minds about this, because in, on one hand, having just the one 16 gigabyte RAM stick in here means that it's very easy to upgrade it to 32 gigabyte and above using just the second DIMM slot. But when you're using this laptop with just that one RAM stick, you're gonna get just the single channel RAM, and that really does limit the performance. And by adding that second stick, boosted not only our performance on this actual device, but made gameplay much smoother, I found with just the single stick, I was getting a bit of hitching and stuttering until everything had loaded in, which took in quite a while until gameplays were very smooth and playable. You can see on the bottom here, we've got some thermal tape for the actual SSDs. So when you do install your SSDs, obviously they will then transmit that heat through the base of this unit. So that's gonna keep them cool. And it is very easy to add a second one here if you wish. And it looks like due to the thickness, an actual eight terabyte drive should fit no problem. So with the actual RAM, 
very easy to change. You can see you just got the retention clips. Now we've tested it both with the 16 gigabytes RAM stick and with my 96 gigabyte Crucial RAM kit, which is very, very easy to install and massively boosts not only the capacity of the RAM, but the performance on this unit. Now we'll put in benchmarks for the single stick of RAM and this 96 gigabyte kit so that you can see just how much difference the dual channel is over the single channel. Another thing to note, the single RAM stick, 16 gigabytes, was running at 5,600 megahertz. As soon as you go over, I believe, 32 gigabytes, it does drop it down to 5,200 megahertz. But from all our testing in the past, that really doesn't make a great deal of difference to the performance of the machine. The extra capacity in most cases more than makes up for it. So we're gonna quickly put this back together and then we're gonna look at the performance. Okay, with the unit back together, I wanna to discuss the performance of this little machine. Now, firstly, I want to mention, because when I first saw this, you can see this little gap here for ventilation and we've obviously got ventilation at the bottom. Now, I initially thought it might be using a fan to bring the heat up out the top of the machine, but they're actually not. All of the heat is being pumped out of the rear. You've got a fan pumping sort of all the heat from the CPU out this one here an actual full-size GPU that's in here is being pumped out of this area. Now the good news is, as I mentioned, it is a removable GPU, but obviously you're gonna to need to get, because the way it's molded in, it would have to be replaced with the same, but it does mean if the card does go wrong in the future, you could replace it. And the CPU is socketed, so you can take it out and replace it, but you're gonna be limited to certain CPUs. I don't believe the K-series will work in this machine, but the T's and the standard uh, 14700, 14900 will work. So you could upgrade this to a 4900 in the future if you wished. Now the 14700 is a decent CPU. It's got 20 cores and 28 threads. Now when we started the benchmark with just the Geekbench 6, which is a nice short benchmark, it gave us a great single and multi-core score because obviously it isn't running too long and therefore throttling back. One thing that's also very interesting is just the difference between the 16 gigabyte RAM stick and the actual 96 gigabyte dual channel RAM. That made a massive amount of difference and shows you how much performance you're leaving on the table by having that one stick. Now, when we moved across to the Cinebench R23, again, we got a nice boost moving to the dual channel. But what was interesting is that this CPU can pull about 150 watts when you first start firing the benchmark up, but it cannot maintain that 150 watts throughout the entire benchmark. You'll notice it will decrease in, in actual wattage over the course. And I found that every two minutes or so, it would start dropping down until eventually after about seven or eight minutes, we were down to 65 watts, which is where it pretty much stayed for the rest of the test. Now, in all honesty, this would be absolutely fine for the majority of people, unless you are running your CPU 100% all day. It was absolutely fine at 65 watts, but obviously that's quite low if you need that power. Another thing that was very interesting, obviously temperatures, it did go right up to about 97, 98 degrees on the CPU when you were fully hitting it at 150 watts. But as it brought that actual wattage down, the temps came down and also the fan noise came down. Now this isn't an overly noisy unit, but we did find when you first started hitting that CPU, it was taking 150 watts, the fans were ramping up and they could get up to nearly 50 decibels, especially when we're actually gaming on this unit. And talking of gaming and 3D benchmarks, this 4060 didn't disappoint. It is a dedicated 4060. And we did a fair amount of not only gaming, but video editing, photo editing on this machine. And it was absolutely flawless. Just as if you built yourself a 4060 dedicated PC. There was no excessive temperatures on that graphics and there was no throttling. We did find the noise was pretty loud when you first start gaming. Again, that's because of the CPU fan, but the GPU fan wasn't overly bad. And we did hit a high of 50 decibels when we were absolutely hammering this unit before it obviously starts dropping that actual wattage down on the CPU. Now again, this isn't excessive and it isn't as bad as most gaming laptops out there, but this is sitting on your desk right next to you. And talking of gaming performance, there was a big difference as well between that single 16 gigabyte stick and the dual channel that we tested. What I found, as I mentioned earlier, when I fired up the games, most notably finals, all the textures weren't loading in quick enough with just that single channel stick, whereas it was absolutely flawless with the dual channel. So I do recommend if you buy one of these units, you can actually upgrade it yourself on Lenovo's website, or it's so easy to do yourself, just get yourself a decent RAM kit and just upgrade it yourself. I will put a link to some common RAM parts down below that we normally use to test these machines. We also tested this unit with DaVinci Resolve and we actually used one of our tough to run 4K 10 bit 50 Hertz projects. It's got a multicam, lots of transitions uh, and it's quite tough for most machines. This unit did handle it very well. Though we did find just that eight gigabyte of RAM on the 4060 
The actual render was a bit slower than we normally get with our desktop machine, but that does have a 4080 in it. And that takes me through to the conclusion, and this is a very unique product. £1,400 is quite a lot of money, but for that you're getting a very beefy system. You'd never get a laptop with this sort of spec for this sort of price. So if you're somebody that doesn't move around too often, maybe just from your home office to your actual main office, this could very well be an absolute useful piece of equipment for you. It's great on your desk, it doesn't take up much space, and it has a desktop's power, providing you can put up with just a 4060 GPU, which in this day and age is only mid-range. Now for me, something like this could certainly do all of my workflow. And as I mentioned, the two little gripes for me though is not having that rear audio jack and not having Thunderbolt ports. I think that's a real miss from Lenovo when you're making a quality product like this. So there we go, that's my thoughts on the ThinkCenter Neo Ultra, a cute little desktop replacement in a tiny little package. But as always, I'd love to know what you guys think. Would you ever consider something like this to replace your actual big lunking sort of desktop machine? Or do you think it's just not enough power for the price they're providing? Let me know in the comment section down below and I will get back to you. And lastly, thanks for watching.